This episode of the My Latin Life podcast is brought to you by Language Blend, the new best way to learn Spanish. Language Blend focuses on what you actually need to live and get by abroad with daily one-on-one lessons, a dedicated texting partner. It's like living in a Spanish-speaking country without ever leaving home. Go to languageblend.com for more information. Welcome back to another episode of the My Latin Life podcast. Since 2014, My Latin Life has been your trusted guide to traveling and living in Latin America. Today, I have two special guests for you. I have Jake Nomada here, and I have our mutual friend Mauricio from Outbound Mexico, a leading tax and legal firm uh, based in Mexico City. Jake, Mauricio, how are you guys doing? I'm great. Thanks, Vance. Yeah, doing good. Glad to be here, fellas. Awesome. We're doing a bit of a deep dive on the expat scene and, and controversies around being an expat in Mexico. And Jake, Jake Nomada, who uh, many of our listeners will know, recently went viral in Mexico, which he tends to do about every three months uh, and uh, gets me canceled by association. Um, <laughs> but but Jake recently went viral uh, talking about an exodus, a potential exodus of expats from Mexico, went a little bit viral and, and Jake's hopped up to kind of talk about it and... Uh, his thoughts on the whole situation, everything. So uh, we're starting off with the tweet, talking about the tweet. Yeah, so, I mean, I tweeted out something. I was on Modafinil one Sunday afternoon and was scheduling my tweets for the week and just put, you know, I was kind of noticing, was looking at some of the exchange rates, et cetera. I'm like, shit, Mexico's, you know, the peso's gaining, right? And I was kind of thinking, you know, if that continues, there is a breaking point where, like, gringos can't afford Mexico. And so I tweeted something to that, like at 10 pesos to the dollar, which Mauricio has repeatedly said that's not going to happen most likely due to the, you know, the interest rates and the central banks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I didn't think it was something offensive. I was just saying, you know, for most gringos, if their prices were to double in Mexico, because Mexico is the 15th largest kind of economy in the world, right? And it's growing. And I don't see if the peso is 10 to the dollar, not 20 to the dollar. I don't see prices plummeting in Mexico to accommodate gringos because there's a lot of, you know, Mexicans that have a lot of money. And so I don't think those prices are going to go down in pesos. And so the whole point of that tweet was that, you know, if a gringo is in Mexico spending three or four thousand dollars a month on their living expenses each month, and now they're spending six to eight thousand dollars a month, some of those people and that's post tax income. Some of those people can't afford that and and they're they might leave and they might go to other places down further south where they can afford. And I didn't you know, when I scheduled that tweet, it was there was no intention to go viral. There was no intention to piss off thousands of people. Um, but that's what happened. So that's that's kind of the backstory of the tweet. Mm -hmm. And it's true that there is competition among vacation spots for most Canadians and Americans, you know, I feel like there's been a flavor of the month every couple of years. Costa Rica was big for a while. Dominican was big for a while. Mexican's been big recently. And with COVID and I guess just how open it is, yeah, that would obviously be the number one factor, just how open it was yeah. uh, over the yeah. past couple of years since 2020. So Mexico's definitely reclaimed number one spot. Uh, nobody I talk to like wants to even go to the Caribbean. Everyone just wants, or like you know, a, a random Caribbean island. Everyone just wants to go to Mexico. Yeah. So it, it's definitely the spot. <laughs> well, I mean, and and it's interesting because yeah, like you said, I think it goes in waves with with travelers, digital nomads, whatever you want to call them, right? Where there is a different flavor every couple of years. Um, but I think the biggest difference recently has been. Mexico remained open during COVID. And I think, you know, for me personally, and for a lot of people, which is a very small subset of people visiting and living in Mexico, that was a huge deal to see like, you know, this country is basically standing up to some of these international powers and saying, we're just going to keep doing what we do. And, you know, I think a lot of foreigners really gained an appreciation and a respect of the country and of the culture due to that fact that they were a little bit quote unquote, I don't know, rebellious. Is that, is that a way to put it, Mauricio? Um, I, I wouldn't call it that. 
but sure, yeah. Go, yeah, I mean, and it, it obviously was by state, right? Like there were certain places in in Mexico, like the United States, that did. I mean, I, I remember back in twenty, the entire rationale of keeping it open was not some sort of libertarian political debate around what what should be done around Just masks. The food on the table. Yeah, it, it was 30% of Mexico's GDP is associated with tourism. So, I mean, what, what you're just going to shut that down? I mean, all these families, they live in the informal t- tourist economy selling stuff at beaches. And right now, I'm at uh, Ixtapa, is so cool. And um, they're, 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 yeah, they're, there's so many uh, fa- families that live off it. So why are you just going to throw them under the bus? Uh, no. So, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, I don't think, but, but Americans confuse that, especially the Twitter folk. And so they, they, yeah. they, a, a, anything that aligns with their political like worldview um, kind of like fits mm-hmm. into that. And so they kind of spin it. Uh, the the Mexican government was just so much. Uh, it was there, there was a so such a large backlash back in uh, 2020 and 2021 over why they didn't they they they, they shut down the country for for tourists mm-hmm. and um, from from the from the from the Mexican perspective and so what then started happening in, in 2021 is that all these nomads really came into mexico and so that converged i was there place. bro i was yeah. there we yeah, were there yeah bro. You, you, you were there you were there. bro it was sick <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so that converged with inflation and that that created kind of a a situation where locals really got pissed off saying i mean <laughs> but i think i'm getting kind of ahead of my but that's just kind of the background of Mm-hmm. how we how we got right yeah. and it's funny so tourism 30 percent of the economy exporting is huge as well both of those two things would favor a weaker peso peso so i yes. think that that you know speaks to that they they will probably want to keep it weak jake i'd love to just return to how you know your thing uh your your tweet struck a nerve with people um what were some of the impacts of that what what kind of feedback did you get oh, the, the, oh uh, god the, the hate was horrible <laughs> I, was, I, I was all over those tweets <laughs> did it was, yeah so first off let me go back to just for like 10 seconds what mauricio just said about like the gringo perspective of what mexico was doing versus the reality is that you know the government was was basically acting in a very utilitarian manner and that they're trying to keep food on the, on the table of a large percentage of the population. Um, and obviously the gringos and the foreigners are seeing this from a libertarian perspective, like, oh, this country is, you know, maybe not rebelling, but they are acting as normal in a sense. And yeah. that obviously got confused a little bit. But even if it did get confused, I think that played a role. But your tweet, your tweet wasn't really about, uh, 2020 or how, how open. The no, it was, was about how it was expensive. all about, it was yeah. all about expen- expensive yeah. and currency and gringos leaving. And I guess yeah. people care if gringos leave. <laughs> like, like, well, they do. Back, <laughs> there was a lot of people that wanted gringos to leave and there was some really, I mean, there was hilarious feedback. Like one guy was like remote jobs are fake work and I hate gringos and I hate phrases. And I was like, yeah. all right, that's, that's a unique take. Um, he was like, I don't think remote work is real. Like only doctors and engineers are real workers and da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that makes zero sense. But um, no, there was a lot of feedback. Gringos go home. Um, there was a lot of, there were two types of DMs I got. One was like, fuck you, vete la verga, all that type stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then there were a few people that were like, you know, death threats. I want to kill you, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then the weirdest, you know, DMs, because obviously the, I couldn't even keep up with all the quote tweets and the comments. Like there were, I think there ended up being like thousands and thousands until I deleted the tweet. Um, but the weirdest one to me, and this is the one that I didn't understand was I would have like educated um, men, you know, like Mexican men, fluent English, you know, have a, have a professional oh, yeah. doctor, lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. 
complaining to me about their salaries when I, and I'm like, I am a gringo living in Mexico. I have absolutely zero control over your salary. And you're, you wanting to put that blame on me or, or I don't even know it. And I wanted to be sympathetic and empathetic to a certain extent, but at a certain point, I'm just like, dude, you're a 40 year old dude. Like, like your financial situation is your, you're a grown ass man. Right. And so some of that stuff was a little weird to me because it's like, you know, if you're if you're 22 living in Mexico yeah. City or in some beach town and, you know, it got super expensive the past three years and you're just finishing up college and whatever, I get that. You're a 40 year old grown ass man. Like you have to take responsibility for your life, no matter if you're born in Canada, United States, Mexico, wherever. Right. So there was some stuff like that that was hard for my mind to comprehend at a certain level. I, I think that uh, Jake unwillingly became the symbol of what's being called gentrification. I mean, if, if, if you say that Roma Condesa is gentrified by gringos, well, yeah, of course, but that, that specific part of the city was already being gentrified by white, rich Mexicans. So why, I mean, why, <laughs> what's the big fuss about? The, the, the people complaining about gentrification, and this is what I was talking with Jake, is, is this, this, you know, is l like upper middle class liberal urbanites that, you know, somehow feel affected by this. But, but Mexicans from all other parts of life are, are not really complaining about this. Um, so I, I where, wanted, where do you think I, it came from? Um, Mauricio, if I could ask, because where do you think know. they all got this idea to be like, gentrification, mal? Um, <laughs> well, where did, where did mean, this come from? We, we Mexicans uh, are all forced on uh, a specific education system, um, which kind of does what other Latin American countries do that kind of blames the USA, like, low key blames the US for a lot of our problems which we can have a debate over that. I don't want to get into that. That's a huge topic. <laughs> that um, might be right, yeah. yeah, that might be a whole different podcast. Um, but it's kind of, I mean, it's it's kind of nailed into our heads in our, our you know, small age that gringos are not to be trusted. And so, <laughs> I mean, so? we need... Really? We, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, politically, they're not to be trusted. We like them in a, in a, in a personal kind of kind of kind of way because they're cool you know uh we we like their media we like their kind of culture um but we don't really like them coming here and engaging in economic activities because that's that's somehow equivalent to some sort of exploitation of a, of, a, of a poor country and society and so it's kind of a mixed feeling we, we, we love their dollars. We love them coming here and showing interest for Mexican culture and, and investing here. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we don't, we don't wanna, want them to integrate so much into Mexico because that somehow is a colonizer experience. It's, it's a really weird political yeah. mentality um, that, that a lot of guys have here and, and, and you know, I think Jake unwillingly tapped into that without him <laughs> quite knowing what he was getting himself into. Because there's, yeah. if, if you guys follow Spanish Twitter, like Mexican Twitter, this is huge. I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the gentrification debate is huge in there. In the, is the it? Yeah, it's, a, it's huge. I mean, everyone's talking about that. Yeah. Um, but but again, uh, what I'm really uh, amazed is that there hasn't been a direct interaction until Jake's tweet. The, the Mexicans were not interacting with the gringos, although they were living in the same city or the same country until now. And, and that was a very violent. And, 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 and when, yeah. I mean, the way I put it, uh, I want like one of the, when I, I woke up the next morning after the tweet went out and I checked, I'm like, holy shit, I got a lot of notifications. And so I actually started responding to him. I didn't think it was going to go so viral, but it, you know, there were like a couple hundred quote tweets and I started responding to it. And there were like, like you said, like these white, uh, I don't think phrase is not a derogatory term, is it? Yeah, no, no. I mean, in, in Mex we Mexicans like to think that there's no 
racism in Mexico, but that's just a bunch of BS. And so I think you can use white. Okay, okay, yeah. So there's like a bunch of like white Mexicans, very good English levels, right? Commenting yeah. on it. And I was like, man, like these people are acting like a gringo renting an Airbnb in Condesa is the return of the conquistadores. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. The people too. And I was like, I, you know, the gringo comes down, rents an Airbnb for two or three months. Mexico City, what you know, eight times out of 10, that's where most of these remote workers that don't have a lot of experience in Latin America are deciding to live for two or three months. And it was like a freak out. And like you said, Condesa, Roma, Norte, Polanco, which Polanco is not really that affected, but those places have been like, quote unquote, touristy for probably a decade now, maybe a little bit longer. Um, Cause I had friends living there when I first started traveling in 2014. And so that's not like really anything too new. The new thing is that the rents have gotten so much that the, the phrase of white Mexican girls or guys that are parents are giving them 25 or 30,000 pesos a month to go live in Mexico city during university can't afford yeah, it. Anymore. Exactly. That, yeah. That's who it's affected by. Right. And so it was interesting to see like, but then it's funny because in a lot, like, like I said, the guy that was saying, no, we hate fresas too. He, you know, if there's no gringos involved, that kind of anger sometimes goes towards the, the classes in Mexico. Right. But when oh, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 mad at a gringo, then everybody's mad at a gringo. And so that's, that's kind of why it was funny. Yeah. I mean, the, the, which, I mean, the, the, the common folk um, would, would say, you know, we, we hate the fresas and gringos. Uh, and then the fresas are no longer at the upper echelons of society. They're, they're, they're not, they're, they're no longer the ones with, 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 with more like capacity to spend money. Um, which is which is a trend I think we'll see a lot in the future. I think I, I personally think gringos are going to be the next some sort of economic elite in Mexico, um, especially the ones that stay in and 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 and, and do business here, uh, because they know they have access to a lot of international connections that Mexicans simply do not. And so and so uh, and, yeah, and, I think that, that, that that's going to happen. And, and, and Mexicans see capital. that coming. And Mexicans see that coming, and they don't like that. And yeah. uh, the, the, the Fresa see it, and, and they, they they see this as their country, as their turf. You know, you can't yeah. just come in and take it. Um, uh, so I, I think that that's the under undertone of the whole thing. I mean, what's going to happen with Mexican integration in North America? It, it's it's a debate that it's runs. It's going to integrate deep. more. It's going to integrate even more. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of our, yeah, a lot of our clients are having their kids here. I mean, just look at Jake. Yeah, um, I mean. So they're going to stay. And, and and then then what's going to happen? They're, they're not just longer uh, t- tourists. They're they're part of a society. Yeah. So how, how- well, well, and it's interesting, too, because, you know, they're I kind of did some research on it. Like Mexican economy is, is the 15th largest economy in the world. And I yeah. think those trends moving forward with more nearshoring, more manufacturing, obviously the tourism sector has blown up and I don't, I mean, I don't see that slowing down. Like there's, there's a real case in the next, what, I mean, I'm not an economist, so correct me if I'm completely off base, but there's a real case. Mexico is a top 10 economy in the world in the next like 10 years. So it's like, there are, there is a lot of money in Mexico and there are a lot of wealthy people Um, you know, so it's on one hand, there are going to be more gringos here and, you know, there is going to be some gringo money coming in. On the other hand, there are, it's going to create a lot of opportunities in, in many industries and those, those wealthy Mexicans are going to capitalize on that. Uh, Yeah. If they have some gringo partners, et cetera, et cetera, like they're going to capitalize on those, those opportunities. So it's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but I do think your point of there are a lot of gringos um, living here now, and they are starting to integrate far more into Mexican society, I think, than they mm-hmm. used to because you it's know people are into relationships, yeah. people are having children, people are purchasing real estate, planning to spend six to twelve months a year here, et cetera, et cetera, um, and you know it's 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 going to become similar to, 
I think certain parts of Mexico long term will become similar to certain parts of, of California, Texas, those southern states where I mean, it, it, it already does. Yeah. Look at Monterrey, San Pedro Garza Garcia, some parts of Tijuana. I mean, it's 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 all American. you know. It looks American. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to see that mesh of where you might. I mean, I don't know the timeline, but in 10 to 20 years, somewhere in Texas might feel and seem very similar to a similar style city in Mexico that's been yeah. quote unquote, gentrified, right? Like it, you're going to see that that mix and, and I get the issues some people had with it. But on the other hand, to be upset at a, you know, a gringo being upset at a Mexican that they're in California or Texas or a Mexican being upset at a gringo that they're in Mexico. It's like the reality is our governments are the ones that have the control to put a stop to that. And the economic benefit to both countries, it's just not going to happen. And it's out of the control of me, you or any other person, you know, individual. Right. So yeah. it, it was kind of a, a weird argument because I'm like, mm-hmm. If you really hate me, go go talk to the government and kick me out. Like the government can just say all foreigners have, you know, it's not that difficult. But there's just so much economic benefit to both countries. It's it's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I think a valid debate around this because that's always the argument that these people put out is they're not paying taxes. Now that's 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 the main and and I would say neither are you. I would bet that neither are your face. No one in Mexico pays tax. I mean, that's uh, th- th- that would be my first counter argument, and and the second one is, you know, th- they do have a point. I mean, be- because the the current tax structure in in, in North America is not designed r- remote work, and then the new things that we're seeing were never in, in the scope of these guys. I mean, um, it was already always thought that you would make your income in the same place as you would live. Of course, that was obvious. Uh, And and, and that's not the case anymore. So, well, I was doing some research on that. I was like looking at some of the VAT taxes and the hotel taxes and Airbnb taxes. I'm like, Mexico does a pretty good job from a government level of getting tax money from tourists on a tourist visa. Like, you know, they Airbnb know tourists are going to stay in an Airbnb yeah. or a hotel. Yeah. They have a tax on that. They know, you know, that tax, et cetera, et cetera. Like they, they do do a, a decent job, if not a good job, of getting tax money from the tourist industry. The I think what the people were saying is that the people that are living in- Income Mexico, tax. Yeah. I mean, and then that goes back to the government level again with the tax treaties, et cetera, et cetera, of, you know- how all that works. And obviously that gets into a whole nother complex topic. Um, but it's, it'll be interesting to see. Cause I don't like, obviously I think Mexico has the biggest, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say issue, but it's obviously there's more foreigners wor- working remotely in Mexico than anywhere else in Latin America, maybe anywhere else. I mean, Thailand probably is more so, but you've got yeah. a ton of remote workers here and the current, government infrastructure is essentially like, all right, you're here on a tourist visa or a temporary resident or a permanent resident. You know, there's a tax treaty in place, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's, that's, I mean, I get the point on that. Um, that's obviously again at the government level. Uh, I still disagree with it because the idea that taxes are benefiting the, the people that need benefit the most. I mean, I'm personally not a big uh, government is Robin Hood type individual. I don't I think we've seen throughout history. That's not the case. Um, But that seems to be, like you said, a pretty common talking point uh, of of locals versus remote workers. Well, the fact is, if they if they, you know, implemented more stuff or the the Mexican SAT was more heavy handed, that would be a deterrent to. Uh, digital nomads working there so it's kind of um you know it's cause and effect if if they um if if you want to like integrate people into the tax system a lot of people might not go for that and they might not they might have other options somewhere else maybe in central america 
uh, somewhere else in Latin America, somewhere in the Caribbean. There's lots of jurisdictions out there. So the Paraguay bros. Yeah, the Paraguay. <laughs> those guys, those guys are. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's interesting too. Be, like you said, like if if the tax regime for for digital nomads and remote workers, et cetera, would get heavy handed. How would that affect, you know, people staying here, for example? So it's it's an interesting topic. To, I mean, there's a lot be- of places with palm trees and uh, ceviche on the beach. And, yeah, uh, like, you well, know, you don't have to go to Mexico. I think it's cool. It's cool. But we're not <laughs> that special. You can get but, a lot of it's things. It's interesting like, yeah. because like we've talked about Mexico and, and how gringos perceive how they handle COVID. But there's also a factor that I don't think a lot of Mexicans understand why gringos really – are starting to move to Mexico, it's just so convenient. Like Mexico has the infrastructure that nowhere else in Latin America currently has. And so you have online shopping in Mexico, Mercado Libre, you know, um, Amazon Mexico, yeah. Rappi Turbo, like those things work at a level in Mexico that you cannot, that's harder to find in other places in Latin America. And then on top of that, I, I, in this, I get some pushback on this sometimes, but I do think due to the proximity, Mexican and American culture is not that different compared to like American and Bolivian culture. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you're right on the, on the most part. I, I grew up with gringos all my life. Uh, you know, I, I went to a private school. And so I'll, because of all the manufacturing investment that there was in my city, uh, a lot of the families of, of people that they sent to like teach the Mexicans on how to do a lot of the work were American. And and that, that caused, at least in me, that, uh, that specific thing made me realize that we're not that different at all. Um, It's not, I mean, a lot of cultural misconceptions. Why I think it's the most important uh, really, I mean, it's 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 very basic. Uh, the the divide is caused because of the language. That's yeah. all. I mean, yeah. if if that's all. If if gringos knew Spanish or Mexicans knew English, th- this debate would not be happening because th- we would learn that the, the differences that are occur are, I mean, the, the the cultures have been integrated to a level that it doesn't really matter. Uh, the yeah. small like con- misconceptions that gringos have of Mexicans and Mexicans have gringos are absolutely not true. They simply do not talk to each other. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a really, uh, it's not, th- this should not be a debate. It isn't, it is in Twitter, in Twitter, everything is a debate. <laughs> Everybody's uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, but in here, I mean, in real life, um, I think there's a lot of curiosity from both sides of knowing how, how, how Mexican culture is and why there's this strange phenomena that you find in, in Mexican culture that you don't find in other places. And Mexicans have this, this kind of um, very like sick <laughs> curiosity of how American life is. Uh, for example, there's this, yeah, there's this huge trend right now of Mexicans wanting to go to Canada for some reason. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's this, yeah. That, doesn't, like that, that, that makes no sense because I see Mexicans when it's 65 degrees out in like a fucking winter jacket. Like, like that's like summertime. Oh, yeah. In yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm here in Ixtapa, it's the heat. It's on fucking, it's horrible. Uh, oh, yeah, but, yeah. It, yeah. But, but, but in other parts of Mexico, it's, it's always warm. And so I don't see why, why anyone would want to go to a country with, like a meter or two meters of snow in the winter. Uh, <laughs> probably, but, probably worth noting to the audience, uh, in case it's not obvious, but Mexicans have visa-free access to Canada, but they do yes. not have visa-free access to the United States. Yes. So Mexicans cannot even transit through the United States if they don't have a visa where you have to go to an embassy, blah, blah, blah. But they can just show up in Canada they might have to show it's the closest them. you can get. It's the closest it's, you can it's, get. It's visa free. They they might ask a couple questions like when you're going home, blah blah blah. But it's visa free. You can go in. Uh, you can go to Canada. Mexicans can like work cash in construction yeah. or, or restaurants or whatever, or they can sign up for a school and maybe like kind of work towards residency. Yeah. 
um, just as a as a footnote. But you know, another point to how it's all integrated as as NAFTA or the North American Union, whatever it's called. Yeah. Mexico is, in, is it's at a special place where no other Latin American country is, uh, precisely because of that. And so, uh, you know, this this there's always the saying that we we we, we Mexicans say we had a dictator called uh, Porfirio Diaz back in the 1900s, ending of the 19th century, starting in the 20th century, and he said. Uh, Pobre México, tan, tan lejos de Dios y tan cerca de, de, de Estados Unidos. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and, th and that stayed. That said until today, it's a common thing to say. Um, and, and so, I, I, I don't know. There's, there, it's so entrenched in, 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 in the ways Mexican thinks to, to, be, to be wary of, of any American presence here. Uh, it's kind of just in our genes, yes. And I think it would be in the in the, in the gringos' genes too if Mexico took half of their land. You know, yeah. I, mean, I think I think the, that would the be history of it does make sense. That that's the funny thing. But then on the flip side, you look like what you said. The history you get it on a certain level, but then in the in the present, you're like, I just want to rent an yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, it makes no sense why, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, no I'm just sense. renting an Airbnb in a cool place. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> How like, am I? I'm an invader, a colonist. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I booked a flight. I did all my, you know, visa residency as your government requested. I booked my Airbnb, paid my VAT tax, and, like, I just want to enjoy life in your country because I like it. <laughs> and But then, like, I do understand the other flip side of the coin where, like you said, although it is a, a small coin because like tourist beach towns, Condesa, Roma Norte. Hey guys, quick break from the episode to tell you about BitRefill. BitRefill allows you to shop online and in person without banks, converting your crypto directly into merchant balance. We're talking gift cards to Nike, Amazon, Apple, Airbnb, Hotels.com, and many more, all paid for with crypto. BitRefill offers more than 10,000 gift card options in 180 countries, including the USA, Canada, all across Latin America, including Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, El Salvador, and many more. You can also apply the code MyLatinLife at checkout to get 10% back on your first purchase. Go to BitRefill.com for more information. Dude, I, yeah. I saw a video from a white gringa the other day uh, from uh, San Cristobal, and it was the classic, like, white gringa liberal like oh they're so friendly oh they don't have much but they they're so happy and i'm like oh my god be chaining fuck up just shut the fuck up like, like just classic like like gringa gringa bullshit i was like oh that that's not helping <laughs> i think that the same thing is going to happen to oaxaca it's, it's already happening now yeah Every, everybody wants to move to oaxaca Oaxaca is like one of the highest poverty rates in all of Mexico, one of the poorest states in Mexico. What better opportunity for the state of Oaxaca than to leverage its natural beauty, surfing, food, whatever, and become tourism friendly for Americans? They'll make themselves richer in the process. They'll enrich their land. They'll build buildings like where, where what's what's up? I don't know. I think Mexicans don't want to don't want to don't want to be rich because some gringo came to visit. I think it's a, it's a matter of pride, you know. There's a reason why Mexico has these huge flags all over the city. It's a, we we are a proud people. Like 59 languages spoken in Oaxaca alone. I mean, no, for it, sure, for sure. I'm not. It's it's yeah. I know it's 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 and so they don't want to you know have gringos coming and. That be, be the sole reason of, of why they develop. They want to have manufacturing and high tech, and they they want to have this sort of industrial development that it's 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 in other parts of Mexico. It's not in Oaxaca, and I would argue that the impact of tourism as a way of developing an economy is mm -hmm. is is not that certain. I mean, if you look at Cancun, for example, I mean, Cancun is huge. Millions of dollars pour into Cancun. Billy. And then you go, and yeah, and then you go to the suburbs of Cancun, and they're just as poor as as Oaxaca. So I, I I think Mexicans are they like tourism, but they understand that it's not 
it's not a silver bullet. You, they, they, it, you need other things. And it's interesting because, like you said, there, tourism is a part of the economy in Mexico and it does benefit certain individuals. And then, it, like you said, though, that's not it doesn't raise the economic status of everyone. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting because I do understand why some people say like, well, I live here and I'm, I'm not wealthy and I'm involved in tourism, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of those front facing tourist businesses that gringos see, uh, for example, last time I was in Cozumel, I booked a tour um, to Chichen Itza, right? And Tulum, like the whole day tour. And it was just with this one random Mexican guy he had his own company, right? He had a, a website, Instagram and a, and a tour bus. And he charged us like, I think it was like 500 for the day for three people. And uh, it was like him, his daughter, his wife. And then they had the expense of gas and the, you know, they had some expenses, but like we see that and we're like, well, that dude's probably making a hundred grand a year. Right. And that's a pretty good salary, even in the States, much less than, you know, if he was living in Playa del Carmen. So it's kind of, you know, gringos see a different side of tourism a lot of times than what some of the locals see because we see front facing successful tourist businesses or like, for example, when I was in Mazlan, you know, you pay the guy like 600 bucks to go deep sea fishing for four hours. Right. Yeah. And you're like, well, he's probably doing pretty well for himself. So kind of, we see a different side of tourism, the successful side of it generally versus like you said, in Cancun, there's billions of dollars going in there and the slums in Cancun are horrific. Yeah, I think that's that's the Mexican government uh, because the, the 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 development model was you put in the resorts, you employ people for low wages, uh, gringos have a great experience, and then the the dollars remain at the at the resort uh, that are you know a lot of them are uh, foreign owned, uh, so it's not it's not you know money does not flow into the local economy as you wish it would. Uh, in Oaxaca, I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, the, the model is different. Uh, gringos don't want to go to resorts anymore in state. I mean, a lot of them do, but, uh, but, but uh, a lot of them want to go and experience the culture and uh, talk to the people and walk around and buy some shoe, uh, whatever, and try the coffee or the food and, and, you know, and, and maybe st spend a couple of weeks I mean, live a more local experience, as you would say, mm. um, and that that I think will be very beneficial, especially for cities in Chiapas and Oaxaca. Uh, yeah. Once thing, yeah, well, once once things clear out, uh, maybe in Michoacan and in Guerrero, um, and and the potential is huge. I mean, uh, a lot of people are already past the uh, the point of saying, "Oh, it's dangerous. I I, I don't want to go there." No, a lot of a lot of gringos are venturing in uh, and buying land here in Guerrero and mm -hmm. Michoacan all over the place and, well, because it, they, it, yeah. So it, I think that's going to be very ben beneficial because they are suddenly, you know, employing people for higher wages. They're actually investing in the land, in the local. You know, I, I think that's, that will be great. I think that money will trickle down. Yeah. Well, and, and I think what you just talked about with the internet and Twitter, I mean, all these things, people are getting more information. It used to be like you'd show up in a, a city that you think is safe and you're talking to locals and they're like, don't go here, don't go here, don't go here. And after a while, you start to realize that, you know, they a lot of these locals want to have you have a good experience. And they've had like, you know, they've been here for 30 years and they've heard of 10 people getting robbed in some city over 30 year time periods. And they're like, Oh, it's <laughs> horrible. Don't go there gringo. And then the gringos after a while, cause I've been down here for almost 10 years. You're like, I'm just going to fucking go. And you go and you have a great time. And you're like, it didn't feel any different than yeah. the other city. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so what, yeah. a lot of people sure. that have been down here for a while are starting to get a little more adventurous. But what you were talking about just now with Chiapas, Oaxaca, Guero, uh, Morelia, um, a meal con is I think a lot of foreigners and I think Mexico is going to start to follow this a little bit more is kind of that ecotourism model that Costa Rica implemented where it's more less of the resorts, less of the partying, less of the, 
I'm not going to say it, but uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And more of that, like conservative ecotourism model um, where that does actually have, a, I think, a more benefit to the locals because it's not these mega corporations coming in with, you know, five star hotels and 300 rooms. It's a little bed and breakfast in the mountain. So I think if Mexico kind of goes down that route in certain states, that could be a pretty big benefit for many of yeah. the locals. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely agree with that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, that's why we always encourage people to go and buy a ranchito in Mexico and uh, live the live live the simple life in the mountains. Um, and uh, you know what what we always say is that, uh, and that's this is going to sound sad, and it is, uh, but it's, it's just the way it is. Uh, gringos don't get killed in Mexico. Mexicans get killed. That's, that's, I mean, organized crime is, works very different than you, what you would find in the inner cities up north in the U.S. or in Canada. It's not disorganized. It's, it, it's consolidated. Everyone has a boss. And the, the, the overall rule is you don't touch a gringo. You don't touch a gringo because if you touch a gringo, they're going to come down for me. I mean, that, that's a red line that the, the DA has, has put like straight in the ground. You don't touch Ringos in Mexico, and that's been around ever since the eighties. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, you know, it's it's just the way it is. You as a Gringo, you're way safer in all of these parts of of that's of a Mexico. Very, that's a very yeah. interesting point. And, and the average Joe in Mexico, you, you, I mean, no one's going to touch you. They. I bet because Mexico is so surreal uh, that they will actually try to meet, maybe even do some business with you. I, I, I'm literally saying this. Yes, we've had crazy cases of people that uh, move to Guerrero or or this this places that are you know a hellhole for that an absolute no go zone, and the narcos there see them and say, yeah, we're not course we're not going to touch this guy we might as just as well make some business with him it's yeah that happens it's interesting you say that because i literally had a conversation at jiu-jitsu in, in a in a mexican gym one time um basically the the local guy he was he was a white mexican upper class and he was kind of like yeah i mean he's like you see the statistics you don't seem to give a fuck i was like no nah, not really because he spoke fluent english and he was like yeah the reality is you're safer here than i am and I was like, what? And he Absolutely. started going into some different stories. And, and then he, you know, he basically was like, yeah, like there is a certain, le I mean, it's not like dead set in stone, but there is a high level of like, just leave gringos alone. Let them, let them enjoy their tourism and, and try not to bother them as much as possible because it causes too much of, of it's too much news. It, it, it's too much heat. Uh, if if a gringo dies in Mexico and it, it's related to whatever yeah. activity. And it was really interesting to hear that a few years back because it's not something a gringo even thinks about. They see the U.S. you know travel advisory shit. They're like, oh, I'm not going to Marilia or oh, I'm not going to Acapulco, right? But the reality is a little bit different. Yes. Um, I, I don't see... I, I mean, I think it's a really rational fear. To be honest, gringos get scared very easily. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they get scared. Um, yeah, it's easy to scare them. Um, and so, <laughs> I, you know, there, there was this occasion, this uh, American girl that uh, I studied with. She, she, she went back to the States, uh, uh, came back to visit because, you know, she, she 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 she'd been him all she'd been here all her life, and she brought her uh, gringo boyfriend from Montana, and um, he was he was scared to death. I mean, I I started to making jokes, you know, oh well, if something happens, at least we got the gringo, we can ransom him off, <laughs> and he was so scared. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he didn't took he he didn't like, it. but uh, anyway, what what I'm well, trying to say is. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is um, that I think it's the I think foreigners are really safe here. It's a safe bet to come and live here. They shouldn't be as scared, and I think Mexicans know that, and that's other reason why they resent that. 
you can uh, you can walk you you can walk in the streets and not get shot and that that isn't precisely my case you know yeah no it's it's interesting too and and it even gets a little bit if you dig a little bit deeper one of my close family friends is a, a mexican american lady she's been in the states for like 30 years from renosa renosa did i say that right on the border renosa yeah renosa yeah um so I had been in Mexico City, I think it was like 2017 for like a month. And then I went back home for Christmas or whatever. And, you know, we were at a Christmas party together and she was like, you went to Mexico City? It's so dangerous there. And I'm like, no, it's far, far safer than any big city in the United States I've been to like in the past five years. She's like, oh, no, it used to be like super dangerous, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, I was stumbling drunk around like five, six different neighborhoods there and had absolutely no problem. And she was baffled. And so, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, again, it kind of goes back to that point where like locals or, or, you know, they have this such large time frame of, of memories and of stories that they think like they're way more scared than a gringo. Cause a gringo comes down, he's walking around the big city and there's, it's, it's chill. Mexican big cities are very chill. You know, like you don't, you go to a nice neighborhood in Mexico, in a big city, Guadalajara, Monterrey, Mexico City. There's no danger in in Condesa, Roma Norte, Polanco, Americana, Providencia, um, Andares, San Pedro, Garza Garcia. You walk around those areas, it's way safer than most of similar areas of the United States from a feel standpoint. Yeah, I mean, in all, in all, in all. Fairness, what's happened? I mean, the case of of Mexico City, it has become much more safer over the last three years than it has ever been. I mean, um, I think the the, the 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 crime rate in the city has plummeted uh, to its lowest well, in history. A lot of us suspect direct yeah, correlation yeah, yeah. between Pilates studios and safety. Direct. That might have a, an interesting effect which is the more gringos come into Mexico, the safer it becomes for, for Mexico. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that, if that would be a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly think that uh, what's going to happen over the next years is that that effect um, won't last, to be honest. You know, as, as, as gringos integrate more into society, they will take more risks. They will live in neighborhoods. Um, and so I, I don't think that trend will remain. And quite honestly, um, you know, I think it's going to be similar as to Brazil, uh, which is that, uh, crime is not as consolidated in Brazil. And so it's easier, you know, to, 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 uh, you know, uh, like, like do petty crime to a gringo, right? Uh, and get, getting away with it. Um, something well, that is... Sure, go ahead. So I have a question about that. Because, yeah, Brazil and even in certain parts of Colombia, although Colombia has been changing rapidly, you know, yeah. there is more street crime than there yeah. is in Mexico. Yeah, and, absolutely. But then you look at the, the statistics, right? And you're like, Mazlan, some years, has a pretty high murder rate. But if you, you know, I've been there in times like 2018, I think it was like the 37th highest murder rate in the world. And it was pretty chill. Like there was really yeah, no... Yeah, because, because not everyone's getting killed. I mean, the, the guys that are getting killed in Mazatlan are the guys from Jalisco that try to get into the plaza and, and, yeah. and, and, and get into the turf of the Sinaloa cartel. And so they get killed. That's the, the, Those are the guys that are getting shot, not your average... American buying a Starbucks. And it's not, it's, it's not, it's, it's not just not the case. Uh, yeah. So data can be really de de deceiving. Um, I think Vance uh, made read a Twitter thread, and then we kind of copied that some, some months ago about the, the, the chance of an American dying. I mean, the death rate for Americans in Mexico. 
Mm-hmm. And it was, I think it was something like it was 2%. like two guys. It was like yeah, two two people was, died. It was like yeah. two out of two million. It was something so absurdly low knock, knock that I was like, I was wood. like, there's no way. I was. It was so. It was. It might have been like sixteen max over yeah. a whole year of millions of tourists. And when Americans are touristing in Mexico, that's not a normal week for an American. Like they're they're normally going hard and doing dumb shit. And so when you have like millions of Americans going hard and doing dumb shit and like only 16 people die, it was lower than if they stayed at home, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think your chances of dying in an, in an airplane crash are similar to your chances of dying if you, if you was that what that was the size of the risk. It was zero point zero zero forty something. Dude, it was so low it didn't make sense. Like if you if yeah. someone just looks up number of Americans that have died in Mexico or number of Canadians, it's like you you would have almost thought that retirees would have just, you know, maybe passed away <laughs> in, in Mexico at a higher rate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, that's such a good and the funny thing is, right? All like boomer gringos have that impression Mexico's super dangerous, right? And I, I've got some kids down here and my mom started visiting like every two months. So the first time we got her to visit and we weren't like at a resort in Mexico, right? She was like stressed, right? She's like, can you pick me up from the airport? Da, 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 da. I'm like, all right. Yeah, you don't have anything to worry about, but all right. Now she comes down. She's, we're going to like, quote unquote, a dangerous beach town in Mexico. Like every time she comes down and she loves it. And she's like, why do people say it's dangerous here? And I'm like, yeah, it's it's Mexico where the street crime is not the same as the violent crime, which is a certain subset of society. And now that she understands that, she's just way more comfortable down here. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Quick break from the podcast to tell you about Language Blend, the best new way to learn Spanish. Language Blend was co-founded by Jake Nomada, friend of the podcast, decade of experience in Latin America, and Jake and his team, they put everything into this program that they wish they had in terms of how to level up quickly with your Spanish language skills. Because the faster that you can get conversationally fluent in Spanish, the better the experience that you're going to have in Latin America. So go to languageblend.com for more information. Yeah, I think that that all adds up. I think it, the, the conversation naturally went into security. Um, I think that Mexicans absolutely know that. As I said, they resent that. Uh, it all adds up. Uh, and so, to be honest, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Nobody I, does. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I think Windows will keep moving here. I think they will keep spending money. A lot of them are going to have kids here. We know like five couples that, you know, decided to open a fondita, a barber. I mean, these are small businesses. They're not, I mean, but they had, they didn't have the money to do that in the States, like open their own thing, but they do have it here. Um, And so a lot of them are becoming small business owners. Um, I think that's a trend that's going to continue. They're going to settle down, have their business, that business is going to grow, uh, and they will slowly but surely become integrated into, into Mexican society. And the security, the dynamic is going to change for them. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I saw a, a projection from the State Department that they, you know, they, they, they expect the gringo population to reach over 5 million by 2040. Uh, something really like in Mexico, yeah, five million, living, like five million, years. which is a it's percentage less than of two the right now. I think, yeah, it's a it's a percentage of the population. That well, that's that'd be a like chunk. almost like four percent of the population, right? That would be a four <laughs> percent of the population. I mean, this this is a voting block right there. You know, it's it's, it's yeah, it's gonna be crazy. So, um, you know, at least I know I'm in the right business. Um, <laughs> But but others, you know, no one's really going to happen. Uh, I think that the first step would be for all these gringos to aprender un poquito de español y saber qué pedo. Sí. Sí. And that would be a good first step. Well, and I think it's interesting, too, from that perspective, 
bef- before remote work really took off, it was mainly like retirees that were moving to Mexico in their 50s and 60s, right? And if you hear those gringos now, they still speak horrible Spanish. Like it's like, you know. Yeah, but they were old. Yeah, yeah. But I think you have a new subset of, of, of these remote workers that are taking Spanish far more seriously because they do have the idea that they're potentially going to integrate in society and live long term in, in Mexico or some of these other Latin American countries. And so it will be interesting. Nobody really knows how that's going to play out where, you know, like Vance and myself, I have like a B3 level Spanish, maybe a C1, depending. I think Vance is pretty similar in that we can carry on hour long conversations in Spanish. You know, my, my girlfriend doesn't speak a lot of English. Um, and, and we, we are, we understand the benefit and the value of, of speaking Spanish and living in these countries and, and how you can actually develop friendships. And we like, should make a podcast in Spanish for Mexican audiences. I think that would be great. That would, yeah. that would explode because Mexicans don't know English. It's this very small percentage. More Argentinians know English as a percentage of the population than Mexicans. Which is so they want to, yeah. And so they want to know. They they want to know what gringos think. Uh, yeah. They just they just can't. So I, yeah. yo lo haría en español, bro. Sale. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, no, that that's a good idea. We could definitely definitely put that together as well because I do think there's a there's going to be a big shift between the retired boomer gringos who come down here and they, they, you know, they're, they're looking for a low cost of living, cheap retirement type scenario versus some of the remote workers or online business people that are going to move here and are going to make an attempt to kind of fully integrate into society, learn Spanish, develop relationship, yeah. have children. And I think that's going to be a big difference between I think what both, both groups. Now. Like you're always going to be a bit like one foot, one foot in, one foot out. Do you think, yeah. Jake, do you, do you have any idea, Jake or Marisa, what the breakdown is currently and where you project it might go in terms of officially retire retirees uh, living in Mexico as expats versus, um, I guess, just anything, non-retirees that we can call digital nomads? Like, Do we have an idea of what that breakdown is yeah. currently and then what, what we expect in the future? I, I do. We just finished the market research for a huge medical uh, tourism resort that's going to open uh, ho- hopefully next few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be big. Sick, bro. Maybe I, sh- maybe, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. I signed an- uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be It's going to be pretty big. And um, we think it's going to be almost half and half. Um, 60% is going to be uh, retirees. 40% is going to be younger people. That cadre of people is going to be split kind of evenly between nomads, entrepreneurs, and tourists that are long, long, long longer stay. Uh, we're talking about more than three months. Um, and I, I think that's going to be the ratio. And it's going to be so huge between, because boomers are retiring in mass. Yeah. I mean, that's growing uh, too. Yeah. And so th- just that huge demographic by itself is going to displace the entire other percentages uh, because it's it's millions and millions of people that have a lot of savings and they're so bored of the states. A lot of them are politically paranoid and they're all sick. And so it, is, it has all converged so that they move here of some sort. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that that's a huge industry that's, I mean, taking off like crazy. I mean, the stem yeah. cell stuff in Mexico Oh yeah, got to be a hundred million yeah. dollar moral market. I mean that you you yeah. got the guys in Tijuana, Puerto Vallarta. I mean it's all over. <laughs> where all the every single like tourist beach town in Mexico has a state of the art stem cell clinic at this point. It's kind of like cra- like pretty high level stem yeah. cell clinic. It's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, I've got stem cells in Mexico myself, so it's it's interesting. But um, I, no, I, I think, think that, isn't that banned in, in the U.S. It's, yeah, I, there's a. I don't know. I, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but there's a certain style of stem cell that you can use in Mexico that I think you maybe cannot in the United States. So that's why people are like, fuck it, let's go to Mexico, get stemmed up. 
And uh, it's, yeah, it's like the gym bros that come here. Jake to is in there. He has Mexican drugs. cells. <laughs> yeah, I've got those Mexican stem cells, man. It's part of, it's part of the uh, the naturalization naturalization process, man. You got to inject Mexican stem cells. <laughs> okay. Do you drink Coca Cola now? <laughs> Dude, I, I did. Coke Zero though. Coke Zero, man. Come on. <laughs> I don't live in Chiapas. Dude, I, I can't I, – I see that statistic about Coca-Cola in Chiapas, and I'm like, oh, my God. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Like, it's, it's If they so did nuts. a study about the population around the world that most drinks Coke, I think Chiapas would be up there in the list. Oh, yeah. It's got to be top three. Yeah, <laughs> like it was R- random question. Okay. Do they make any rum in Chiapas? Make a rum and Coke. I feel they like it's do. probable enough to make rum. They do. My, my, my grandmother grew up in a sugar cane plantation in uh, Chiapas, well, close to one, and so they do great. They do grow a lot of sugar, and so there's sugar, there's liquor. So I think, yeah, I, 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 I think Guatemalan Rome is. Yeah, yeah, that's like the national uh, drink down there. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm partial to Nicaraguan rum. I think that Florida Cana. <laughs> That's that's good. That's, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. Good. So Chiapas is not big on rum. It, I mean, it's mostly moonshine liquor. It's funny because it's on the border of Guatemala. Yeah. So the the, the weather is similar, but somehow, so I don't know why. Um, there's no rum industry. It's not it's not just a big thing. There's a large. We're gonna have to dig industry. into that. We're gonna have to dig into yeah. that. That's hmm. interesting. Yeah. Guys, I wanted to uh, to take this moment to my announce uh, my candidature, my candidacy for the governor of the state of Veracruz. I'm gonna run. <laughs> Shut up! I'm Shut up, man! Governor, Shut. you're you really you really pushing some buttons so the people of Veracruz <laughs> yeah. don't want to be yeah. they, they 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 don't want a, a gringo. As- I'm gonna let's run. let's let's announce that on the uh, the and, Spanish version of this podcast. Yeah. And we have a local meme here in Mexico, which the Veracruz people are all like like fishes and, and, and crabs, and it's 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 kind of a local thing. Wait, so, what? Uh, uh, can you, can you break this down? Yeah, there is this meme thing going around in Mexico because Mexican memes are the best memes in the world. Once you get Spanish memes, yeah, Spanish um, language. Spanish memes, memes like- are much better than American memes. They're so lame. Um, uh, and so there's this joke going around that because Veracruz is a state that kind of stole all the seas, you know, from, from the other states, uh, it's so long. So it, it, it covers most of the Gulf of Mexico, mm-hmm. that all the people of, uh, Veracruz are somehow descendants of fish. It's, 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 it's a stupid <laughs> thing. And so they're all crabs, uh, or, or some side of, of sea life. Um, Hivas, oh. Hiva, yeah, and so uh, yeah, hi. you see memes when when they see you know there's like this painting and there's a guy eating like I don't know crab or a hive or something. Yo pensando en mi futuro, and then there's this fish saying, "Y un pinche jarocho," so something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so it's a it's a dumb thing. It, it's a thing. I, I wouldn't run for the government. Veracruz, it's a pain in the ass. You don't want to go to that state. Po- politically wise, it's it's a mess. The, that's the that's the funny thing about Veracruz. I've I've known like four or five dudes from Veracruz uh, through just like jujitsu and stuff. And uh, every one of them, as we weren't, we've I've never been to Veracruz, and I ask about Veracruz, and they're like, they're like, don't go, it's awful, blah blah blah. And then I talked every single foreigner I talked to that goes to Veracruz, like Veracruz, is pretty sick. Like, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah. And so it's a weird thing where like the locals that left aren't huge fans, but then the foreigners are like, no, their crew's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, the port, it's so beautiful. It has this Havana vibe because the buildings are old and it's 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 yeah, it has this Cuban vibe to it. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the the mountains are great. I know Vance is a big fan of mountains for whatever reason. Um, and then the coffee is amazing. That's that's the the beaches are mad. They're not great. Yeah. But it's a, it's a really nice state. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's always interesting to see the, the foreigner perspective on certain places versus the local perspective. Uh, Cause sometimes like a for like a local will be like, Oh, that place sucks. 
And then the Forder go there and they're like, no, this place fucking great, man. What are you talking Veracruz about? has this, I mean, it's an, it's, I have this dilemma because yeah, the tourist areas are nice, but gringos don't venture out to the other areas, which are horrible. So they're hell holes, you know, they're, they're, they're this in, industrial areas full of narcos and, 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 and strip clubs and you, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Wait, yeah, you, maybe that's why the gringos like it. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why. There we go. The the wrong type, though. But yeah, it's not Veracruz is, well, and I love my friends from Veracruz, quiero mucho, pinches jarochos. But it's still <laughs> not, it's still not the. I mean, apart from the capital city, uh, the, and the port, the rest of the state is not great. No, I think there's some six spots. I think there's some six spots. But instead this, of instead of making this like a, a Veracruz podcast, because I mean it might not be the best use of our time, but <laughs> random thought: What if Gringo naturalized as Mexican citizen ran for governor or something like that, and his policy was just like, you get, I'm, you I'm like, it's, I am it's, bringing, it's, I'm bringing American logic. <laughs> like it's like. I mean, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I, I'm not going to do my politics. Uh, that's too controversial. But if AMLO could win, anyone can win. <laughs> so You have so to be if, handsome. Yeah. That's what I've learned about Mexican politics. They just like a handsome Ah, uh, Yeah, that's why Enrique won. Yeah. So much years ago. But, but yeah, he, he was... Yeah, you also got to marry some uh, telenovela star. Yeah, that helps. Uh, and then, I mean, then that people would really like that. If yeah. that's what you have to do, like that's a horrible fate. Like just a horrible, horrible fate. Or influencer like the Monterey guy. Yeah, Samuel Garcia. Is, yeah. I, I like him. He's, he's really funny. I just make fun of him. And anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you could run. You could win. Uh, I don't think it would be constitutional for you to run as president. Uh, but I think you can be a good governor if you want. I think you would be a good a decent governor. Yeah, the last, shadow government. Literally the last thing I would want in life is to be involved in politics in any country, <laughs> much less yeah. like uh, as a naturalized citizen somewhere. Like it, that just please no. Like I just want to have a nice peaceful life, a little casita at the beach. Like just leave me alone, you know? Like that'd be the last thing I'd want. I think all of you guys want that. It's trend I've seen. The, you all want to be like I. I mean, when I mean you, I mean the no, and 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 the gringos in general. They, they all want to be like left alone in some nice beach town with a with a. This is a good property. topic. This is a good topic because yeah. Mexico is a good place if you just want to chill, have a quiet life, eat seafood, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. if you actually want to be a notable person in your life and be out there. Mexico might not be the best place to do that, or it's like a little, it's it's a it's a bit of a tougher situation when you're a high yeah, profile it's not person. it's not yeah it's if you're a high profile and a high spender, uh, I think some parts of Mexico would be great. Uh, there's a friend of mine who's also really active on, on Twitter. His name is Jaime, and uh, I kind of hate him, but I, I I love him at the same time. And Jaime, you know, he's from Monterrey, um, and. Uh, that's exactly his point. If you're a high spender, a high earner, if you want, you know, want to get a bit famous, San Pedro Garza and Monterrey are the place to do it. Yeah. So there's there's a little bit of everything for everyone. I'd say that Guadalajara is just as good for that as uh, as well. I don't know, but I think that if you really want the Latino get rich vibe, uh, Panama. Hey guys, quick interruption to tell you about Bit Refill. BitRefill is the best way to convert your crypto into gift card balances. These are gift cards that you can spend at Hotels.com, Airbnb, Nike, and many more. You may remember Joel Valenzuela, previous podcast guest. He's been living on crypto exclusively since 2015, and he's a big consumer of BitRefill. And so I asked Joel, I said, what do you like most about BitRefill? He said that he likes the instant delivery, the precise amount so that you don't have to juggle a lot of gift cards. And he loves the global selection. Nobody else has this much selection of gift cards. Over 10,000 gift card options across hundreds of countries. Go to bitrefill.com to sign up. And you can also use the code MyLatinLife for 10% back 
off your first purchase. Go to bitrefill.com for more information. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of gringos that move to Mexico, like you just said, kind of just want that like casita by the beach, integrate with, with the people that are living there, have a chill life, make a little money online, you know, have their kids, their girl, whatever. And that's, I think, a lot of the what a lot of gringos are looking for to a certain extent. I don't think most gringo, I mean, I don't know any gringos other than the ones that are famous on YouTube or whatever, want to come down to Mexico or Latin America and be famous or do this or that. They're just like, no, nah, it's cool down here to chill. The people are friendly. The vibe's yeah. good. So I think the vast majority, and that's, I think where a little bit of the confusion is when, when I got some of the, the anger I did, I'm like, I like your country. I like your culture. I like your food. I like your people. And I'm just living a chill life here. Right. And so it was kind of, that was the biggest thing for me does like the desire of the average gringo living in Mexico versus how some of it is viewed, which was, was one of the most confusing things. Um, I wouldn't pay much. I mean, m most Mexicans love gringo. They oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we absolutely love them. We buy the Twitter, food. Twitter, Twitter Mexicans are different. We, I mean, it's <laughs> to, to, to Twitter, to the, the Twitter liberal Mexicans, uh, because they can't be as cool as them. That's really the reason. Um, and that's, that's just, wait, 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 I, I think we're winding down here, but let's do bring up the biggest difference that I noticed is the left wing Mexicans or Latinos versus the left wing Westerners. Cause it's completely oh oh, different now commencing the segment 50% chance. I'm going to have to cut out, but uh, <laughs> Jake, uh, please continue. I, 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 I can't, I, I can talk about the Mexican left, but I, as a Mexican, I can talk about the, uh, although I, I know it well, uh, I have yeah. my opinions, but I, but I don't you, think it would be wise to talk about. Give me the 30 second time. Mexican left wing point of view. And I want to see if it, if correlates with what I saw, you know, with all the, cause that's who it was on Twitter. All mad at me is left wing Mexicans, 95% or whatever. So let me, let okay. me hear your talk on that. The, the t I mean, how do they think or, or well, what's kind my of their take in point, that? I just noticed a couple things that were vastly different. I would say that the, the typical uh, leftist Mexican guy would say something like, Mexico has been exploited and denied its economic growth for centuries because of the U.S. And the U.S. does not want to have a strong <laughs> and powerful Mexico. And so there's this kind of idea, this kind of plan that, uh, you know, Mexico was me permanently uh, must must stay poor for us to exploit its resources and its cheap labor. Um, and so Gringo's mo mo moving here are kind of riding that wave of privilege and, um, and they're perpetuating the exploitation of, of Mexico and Mexico in general, which has been pillaged. Uh, my view of that is that, you know, these guys are idiots and if they, if they really wanted to do something for Mexico, instead of complaining, they would actually go out and, and do something. I mean, we have a lot of problems that are caused because we as, a, as, as Mexicans really need to get our shit together and, and work some solutions. And this idea that this is, there's some external force that's denying us access to that, I, I think it's not realistic. And so that's it. Yeah, yeah that, that was definitely the biggest thing I noticed is that the left wing in Mexico to a certain level was very nationalist like oh yeah mexico yeah for mexicans, right like they were like mexico for mexicans nationalist you know like foreigners etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, state owned yeah it wasn't like all the weird shit in the states like you didn't see all these trans this you know open borders this etc cetera, etc cetera. there was a huge difference even though they were clearly like a kind of like a liberal left-wing vibe but they were nationalist whereas in the states completely the were, yeah but the right is a patriotic one uh and yeah. there's this I, I i as a mexican don't understand those debates i i think i'm getting my, ahead of myself i should but i don't understand at all i mean one side is accusing the other side of 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 wanting the other side to 
post eating bugs or something like that and, and everyone else. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy that the level of, of debate you guys. And so, you know, the, the, the globalists and all, all this rhetoric, I don't, understand. it's, it's beyond me how you could, your left and right fell into this debate. Yeah. Uh, it, it, well, it's completely flipped from like the nineties in the States, like in the nineties, the, the, what do you want to call them? Left wing or uh, Democrats or whatever were like anti-government, anti-corruption, da, 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 da. And then, yeah. it, you know, it's completely changed. And, and so it's interesting, but it was, it was just crazy for me to see the, the Mexican or the Latino side of that and see how different it was versus the, the psych, the crazy shit we have going on in the States. Yeah, I don't know if it's similar in Canada, but at, at least in Mexico, we, we get really, uh, it's, we don't understand the, your politics at all. It's really hard for us to, to, we, we don't them. either. I don't, yeah. I don't understand our politics. Uh, at this point. And that's it. And, and, and it's for, for it, it, if, if it's hard for Mexicans to understand US politics, it's almost impossible for a gringo to understand Mexican politics. Yeah. It's absolutely impossible. Um, so I, I wouldn't even try. It's a no. failed attempt. <laughs> well, like, I put something out like because I, I, I had mentioned it one time at jiu-jitsu like, oh, AMLO's cool. Like he kept Mexico open. Da, 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 oh, da. Shit. And, like, oh, all, shit. All the upper class Mexicans are like, fuck that. You know, all oh, mad at shit. AMLO and all mad at me. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to say that anymore. <laughs> like, Yeah, don't do not do that. You're not going to get killed because you, you started some Twitter brawl. You're going to get killed because you started talking about AMLO. That's you don't do that. You don't do that. No. Yeah. No, and, yeah, I learned and elections that lesson are coming like, up, and uh, it's gonna be a tough year. Yeah. Everyone no, gets. No, it. no, I'm definitely, definitely won't be saying that ever again. Yeah. Hmm. Of course. Well, uh, cool. some, if, some if I had to, uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll start wrapping it up. Um, we'd love to switch gears a bit. We're just here, Jake, once again. So I mean. Uh, you went viral in Mexico, kind of bringing it back to how, how we started things off at the beginning of the episode. Um, how did you grow from the experience? What have <laughs> it would have been uh, some of the aha moments or the um, some thoughts that you've had uh, from your recent viral experience? Yeah, I mean, I never try to go viral, so it's not like I'm I'm trying to go viral or you know i was in like fucking millennio and all these all these famous tiktokers and like like they're like 15 news articles i was very happy that millennio put a good photo of me like that was fantastic um but reality of it was like i don't want to go viral and i'm gonna try not to in the future uh because i just i there's no benefit uh for me or for most gringos to like go viral in, in a country you're not a, anywhere really, but in a country you're not a citizen of. Um, so the, that was one of the things. And um, I mean, a couple of the bigger ones were like the differences between the left wing and, and Mexico and Latin America versus in the States. And um, the reality is I've never had a personal experience in Mexico where people did not like me or were openly aggressive towards me because I was gringo. Um, and obviously, so there's like a huge disconnect between Twitter and the real world. We've obviously, we know that, but that was, that was definitely a shining light. I did get recognized at the mall a couple times. Really? Uh, after that being in millennial. How'd yeah. that go? How'd that go? Uh, literally <laughs> the, the first time, the first time I was walking with my kids. Right. And I see like these people pointing at me. There were these these two young girls and these two guys, and the one girl was pointing at me. And I look over and they're all like looking at me, like, you know, like looking at me and whispering. And I'm like, oh fuck. Like, you know, they clearly saw one of those TikToks or those articles, and they're like, Oh, there's the bald semi-muscular gringo. Like, you know, and though I don't like it because a few of the people like purposely had bad translations of what I said. And I was like, that's bullshit. Like, you know, because I'm saying basically if prices double in Mexico for gringos, a lot of gringos will be forced to leave. And then some dude on Instagram's like, this gringo says all Mexicans are poor. I'm like, that is not what I said at all. <laughs> and so I, I didn't I didn't feel comfortable getting recognized because I didn't know if they read like, you know, a few of the articles were pretty fair, but then there were some bullshit translations. So I was like, eh, I'm just going to get in my Uber and, and head back home after that. So 
that's uh, that's how that went. Hmm. I think you could be a great Mexican influencer. I think a lot of people would follow you. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you could. You could I think well, if you try to tap into that market, you would totally like. Yeah. Well, have you ever tried to get in like a Mexican movie or or novella, Jake? Do you think that that could be a no? No, I don't oh, yeah. want. Be, I don't, they, I that don't could want work. Any for, of these dude, things. they that need they need a, a stereotypical. You, you already guy. have press. You, you already you already. Are <laughs> yeah, be like the fucking just like run some steroids. Be like the John Cena of like Mexican I, I, movies. And I, like, I, I yes. know. Yes, yes I, Mark Wahlberg. Yes, <laughs> yes I know. <laughs> Oh look, it's the it's, the it's the steroid not Gringo with the shitty shitty Spanish accent in our movies. Oh no! I, no, I know there's one. this American guy that really, I mean, couldn't get his career of of, of the ground in the states, but he tried in China, and now he's in every Chinese movie, and he plays the American dude. And um, yeah, <laughs> the, the the bad American guy. I think he could do the same. thing. Oh, I could he, definitely do the same. I got like the bald hair, the muscles, like I'm everything. Yeah. The but, you know, it's funny you say that. I had a friend like five years ago. We were living in Bogota, right, in Colombia. And he he spoke fluent, fluent Spanish. And somehow he got connected with a producer there for a, a big TV show. And he ended up playing the, like, bad European for, like, two years on this TV show. And he would get recognized in, like, public all the time because it was a pretty big show. And And his take was, like, that is awful. And so I don't want anything to do with that. I actually have a uh, TikTok video about Monterey. And I said, like, you know, it's got that Norteño vibe. It's got a very strong Mexican Norteño vibe. And that pissed off like a thousand people. And they're like, oh, you're saying that's negative. I'm like, no, I, I'm just kind of saying that m a lot of gringos, not myself personally, go to gentrified beach towns in Mexico City, Cond Condesa, Roma Norte. That's not what they like. Me personally, I don't have a problem with it, but it pissed off a lot of people. So I was like, all right. Mm. Mm. So if I had to kind of conclude a little bit, it sounds like everyone agrees that uh, the trend is only going to continue, both of retirees and of younger people moving to Mexico. And maybe the, uh, the rise in the Mexican peso in the past year is uh, somewhat of a temporary deterrence, I guess, but doesn't doesn't impact the long term trend of continued uh, Americans in Mexico. Yeah. And of course, of probably continued integration of Mexico into the, uh, I don't know, the financial system, the economic system of, of North America, and everyone's going to continue being best, best cousins. Yeah. yeah well, it, like kind of, yeah, like a forced friendship. No one wanted it in the first place, but now we. <laughs> yeah, that that border there. There's nothing that's going to change that. Our I think both sides benefit from it economically. So at a government level, they're not going to change a lot. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like we can we can speak learn to speak each other's languages and integrate as much as possible. But you know, again, it's it's out of the individual control. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's the biggest thing. And overall, I mean, I think a lot of at least my audience and, and Vance's audience, and I think most of your clients, Mauricio, they like living in, like foreigners, they like living in Mexico. They like living in Latin America. They're choosing to live here. Um, yeah. And so I think that was kind of an interesting, I think that was a, a maybe one of the biggest things is that, you know, we're choosing to come down here and live here because we do like it. We like the culture. We like the, the vibes, the lifestyle, the people, the food. And so, you know, I think that's going to continue. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a good wrap up. <laughs> good stuff. So Jake's going to do his best to not go viral in the future. Probably still going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, <laughs> he's going to also try his best to not get on a major Mexican Netflix show, but we're all, we're all hoping it happens. <laughs> I think a Televisa program would, classic the telenovela sort of thing like Tele i mean the only yeah. thing i would consider is a telenovela like i could be the bad american in a telenovela oh of be, course like the owner of this hacienda or <laughs> <laughs> that's that's bad that's bad that's bad yeah yeah
<laughs> no, I, I, I see him more as like, it's just like, hola, soy el novio de tu hermana. Soy de Estados Unidos. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Me gusta, me gusta tacos and tequila. Like no. You but, stem cells. But, but, you know, fan. Yeah, and stem cells. <laughs> Dude, you know, last thing, and we need to say this. We need to say this on the Spanish version of this. Gringos have this conception of Mexico where it's like tacos, tequila, beaches, and and violence, right? All these all this bullshit. Those to me personally are not the biggest things in Mexico. The biggest thing is a foreigner when you live in Mexico. The biggest culture shock is how many fucking topes are all over Mexico. <laughs> and different that's, styles. That's different weird. styles. There's like oh. eight styles of topes. There's oh no, no there's that there's not a style of tope. I, I actually know this story for some reason. It's it's sad, but it, it's like Mexico in a nutshell. Um there was this factory of Mercedes-Benz, this huge plant in Guanajuato some years ago. And they were, they were um, trying to build this, this, this German car that would be exported to Europe. Okay. And um, they couldn't test it in Mexico because of the topes, right? It was so, they, they, its height was so low. And so the, the, the German engineer said, okay, that's fine, we can elevate the, the height of the car a bit, but we just, all, all we need is a standard tope size of Mexico. Like this German idea that it was, you know, it, 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 has, to, <laughs> it has to be a standard tope size. And the Mexican engineers came up with this uh, study, and I don't know why, there's 58 types of tope in Mexico. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, that, that is not bullshit. There's 58 types of because every municipality and if you don't has its school. own kind of design. Wow. So they kind of summed it all up and they sent Germany this this file with 58 designs. At the end, the car was not built here. They they, they shut the plant down. It was impossible. It wasn't viable. Yeah. And, and yeah, for, like, you know, a $5 billion dollar car plant in Mexico was shot down. You didn't know the top of size. There was no standard top of size. And, and tope is speed bumps for anybody that doesn't speak Spanish. Oh, yeah. So if you if you own a car or rent a car in Mexico, you will quickly get acquainted with the pure quantity of topes everywhere. I, I, I'll tell last story, then we'll go. Uh, I went to Palenque to see the, the runs down or the runes down there. And then we drove the car from Palenque to uh, Yachtilian. You know, you have to get on the boat, go down there. It was a two hour drive and the topes were so prevalent on the way back. I counted them in a two hour drive of like a hundred some kilometers. There was like 160 some topes, like literally every kilometer was a tope. And so that's, that's my, uh, that's my Mexican tope story. Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen people put topes in front of their houses because they don't like the, you know, anyone can put Speeding. a tope. Speeding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just put them anywhere, right? Yeah, so you, put a, you, you put them in front of the street and you say, well, es que aquí aceleran mucho, pinches. So, so that's, that's, that's why you do. You put a tope or you fill this paint bucket with concrete. That's also a way of doing it. And you put it in the middle of the street. And so that's also a way of making slow down now you have an obstacle yeah and that's the thing in mexico city yeah the yeah. It's, it's it's definitely a change for foreigners that come to mexico yeah. and start driving it's it's a unique yeah thing. Okay. So, the tope culture <laughs> all right well uh any any last thoughts conclusions i want to go to the beach Dude, yeah, go enjoy X Tapa. Those beaches are incredible. Yeah, but, um, have, yes. have a wonderful. I, I hope you have a great sunset tonight. Yeah, it's just happening now, so I gotta go. All right, sunset. Hey, thank you, guys. <laughs> Sick. Right, well. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Just to wrap it up, a um, little bit of a mixed bag episode here with Jake Nomada and Mauricio from Outbound Mexico. Again, Outbound Mexico is a sort of a, a tax and legal advisory firm, uh, pretty much a one-stop shop in Mexico City for expats 
looking for services, whether you want to open up a company in Mexico, whether you want to get residency in Mexico for yourself and your family, maybe you want to buy a property, maybe you need a fideicomiso. Uh, Mauricio and his team uh, can pretty much do everything. So we highly recommend Mauricio and Outbound Mexico for all services uh, related to to, to Mexico and, and laws and, and all that good stuff. And if you mention My Latin Life, if you mention Jake Nomada, you're going to get treated even better. We're going to leave all the ways to contact Mauricio in the show notes of the episode. If you mention Jake, you mention My Latin Life, um, maybe you get a discount, maybe you just get treated better. Uh, we'll we'll oh, see yes. how it, some, they, some, they, some, they, some, they good. get the special also, treatment. Okay. They got that. They got a nice service where if you're living in Mexico, you can send, you know, if you're buying a car, if you're getting insurance, any little thing that you need, you know, some type of contract looked over, you know, Mauricio and his team are fully bilingual. They can check that contract, make sure everything's good. So that's like, that's a lifesaver to be honest. Yeah. Mauricio, it do you is. want to tell us a little bit more about this service? Uh, top down. Well, you put this out recently. It's the first I've heard yeah. of it from any yeah, provider it's, it's kind of a new product idea i think it sounds really cool it's it's a, it's a thing that we came up with um so basically lawyers are expensive pretty much anywhere and so what what if you could you know buy a monthly subscription service like some sort of membership where you get access to all of our uh services but it's also an insurance right so if 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 something ever happens to you if um, that's, you know, not great. Um, if you get into a big, uh, kind of a problema that needs a lawyer, um, we kick in, we, uh, represent you as part of that, uh, membership. And of course there's like this, there's, we, we always encounter this, the same 200 question of people that, that, that come here, uh, regarding taxes, regarding property, regarding, uh, opening a company, et cetera, et cetera. And so, we build this very handy guides that are in English uh, for you to kind of know what's up in Mexico, for you to know um, how to how to you know move around and 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 be safe um, in any way, you know, not just uh, physically safe but legally safe, um, and to reduce your taxes as much as possible, etc. So we 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 built those, and of course we provide also twenty four seven. Like assistance in terms of um, any anything that's logistical, so like a virtual assistance type of thing, and also any legal uh, consultation that you might have, any question. And we also provide unlimited uh, document reviews, which I know Jake is a big fan of that. Um, so yeah, yeah, we, yeah. It, that's huge. If, if you're living here, yeah, if if, if you have a contract, if you have an insurance policy any sort of legal document that, you know, you don't understand because Mexican legal Spanish is horrible. Um, and, it, you know, you could just, it. yeah, you could just send that to us and we'll explain. Uh, we just launched uh, a month ago. It's, uh, again, it's uh, $75 a month. And um, I believe, uh, you know, you, Jake, and you, Vance, have an affiliate link for that. Uh, so that's going to offer you a small discount there. And if you would like to join as an affiliate, I mean, I think anyone can join as an affiliate. Uh, so, so yeah, that's up there for anyone who wants to get it. Sick. Well, thanks again, Mauricio, uh, for joining us. Jake Nomada as well. Uh, all the links will be in the show notes where you guys can get in contact with Jake or Mauricio. If you're from uh, Netflix, Mexico, uh, please get in touch with Jake to get him <laughs> on uh, some sort of program. Uh, and for all Don't other uh, services in Mexico, please contact Mauricio. That service sounds pretty cool. If you're in the process of maybe buying a house or establishing yourself oh, yeah. somewhere in Mexico, tons of stuff. So lots of good value from the team. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed. This has been another episode of My Latin Life Podcast. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks.